lots of Afrikaners literally convert to Judaism and then go and return to Israel because they literally want to go and like kill Palestinians for sport because they see in Israel what they used to have themselves. And of course they, they get accepted because usually it's very difficult to get a conversion accepted in Israel, but for them because they're white and you know they have experience doing apartheid and such, the Israeli conversion authority recognizes their utility, their experience, and essentially just takes them in on the spot. And it's like, yeah, you're, you're just like us now. Welcome. Move into the West Bank. Here's your rifle. There are actually communities of white South Africans in the West Bank. I'm fairly sure that most of these people were not um, actually Jews before converting because most South actual South African Jews were against apartheid. Many South African Jews were actually a core part of the anti-apartheid movement. Like among the people who were legally considered white in South Africa, there was a massively disproportionate amount of Jewish people who were members of the ANC, of the Communist Party, of other groups fighting against the regime. From South Africa to an Israeli settlement in the West Bank. Let's look at this. I hope there will be war. I hope there I will hope be war. There will be war. Because it is just, we are just playing. He has an incredible Afrikaner accent. The playground is disputed land in the heart of the Middle East, the so called occupied territories. Israelis and Palestinians both claim this land. Scattered across it, more than a hundred. Man. Because by saying I would prove that she's wrong, I have to stay. Was to say I will prove it to you. This guy's name is Johan Brink. That's a very um, Afrikaner sounding name. It's about the Torah and the Shabbat. Is he a convert? Christianity and didn't. And were brought up in the Dutch Reformed Church in the East Rand. There was little in their background to suggest they'd leave their church and South Africa. They said that they were Christians and they converted to like Judaism specifically because they wanted to go to Israel and do apartheid again. She's saying they, they were Christians. These are not actual South African Jews. These are people who's Afrikaners who specifically converted in order to go and do apartheid in Israel. Fucking ridiculous. They, they asked questions of Christianity and didn't find answers. When she came with these crazy ideas about the Torah and the Shabbat and the, and the feast, I said to her, you know what? You are wrong. And the biggest mistake I ever did was to say, I will prove it to you. Because by saying I would prove that she's wrong, I had to study the word. And then after two weeks, I came to her and I said, you know, you're not even right, but you only got half of it. <laughs> There's just so much wisdom in the Jewish faith. You search yourself. I think his wife was Jewish. Was she? I think so. Yael Sharif was known as Christelle Peterson until the day she converted to Judaism. In no, she's a convert too. She's a convert too. They both converted to go and do apartheid in, in fucking Palestine. I gave them too much credit. I, I shouldn't have said that. Like, I, I fucking know that actual Jewish South Africans are far better than this. They were some of the, the, the most ardent opponents of apartheid in their country, aside from black people. Cape Town, after two years of study, while Johanna and Monell began their conversion at home in Krugersdorp, but left for Israel before it was complete. They still don't qualify for Israeli passports, as only <laughs> Jews are granted automatic- Why are they there then? How are they there in a fucking West Bank settlement when they don't even have a passport yet? ...automatic citizenship under the law of return. So every three months they have to leave the country to renew their visas. In many ways, they say, they have renewed- that's ridiculous. They're there as tourists. They're living in a settlement as tourists. And Israel, like, doesn't even care because they pretend to be Jews. They, like, went there to LARP as fucking Jews because they like apartheid. This is South Africa. Their lives. For me to stop watching rugby on a Shabbat, I mean... The craziest thing, like, you know that Israel is okay with this because they let them back in when they leave to renew their visa. They just let them back in. They don't ask questions. Every three months they leave and come back. And it's like... Welcome home. I loved rugby. I lived with it. Now if you ask me, I haven't got a clue who's playing, when they're playing. As important as that was to me, it was my life. So unimportant it is now. It's amazing. You know, we would love to say maybe there's some Jewish blood way back, but I don't think it's that. I think it's our upbringing. Generally, the Afrikaner people, they are generally more religious people. Uh, and I think... Oh my God, that is an insult to Jewish people. That is so insulting. That, that is why they, they are more searching.
the search ended in Israel. How can you be a Jew and not live in Israel? I mean, she's got it reversed. She became a Jew because she wanted to live in Israel, because she wanted to do, it, to do more fucking apartheid. They live in a settlement. They live in a West Bank Members settlement. His family to follow. This is the life that I like, Seth. I like doing it, so that's why I'm doing it. Look, he's in, he's in like a, 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 a specifically like area that was cleared of Palestinians in the West Bank. You can tell from all the trash and the destruction around him. South Africa, it made sense to do the same in Israel. The farm is leased from the government. <laughs> Talia imports sheep from South Africa, making Does him he... not only the only Afrikaner farmer in Israel. Does he I know go it's over? only land and that is why I love working in the land. I love building up the country. I know it's for my people. It's for the people for of Israel people. and we are the people. Yaakub I want Talia, him to say if he real converted. name Yakubus Johannes Talyard. Yakubus Johannes Talyard. I think Talyard sounds Jewish to me, so he might actually be Jewish. Yakub Talia, real name Yakubus Johannes Talyard. Yakubus Johannes Talyard, like that. I don't know. Is that really his real name, or is it just his legal name? Did he change it? We'll see. Grew up on a farm in South Africa, where his father was a preacher. Despite this, he converted to Judaism. He's a convert. They're all converts. Why am I even asking? They're all fucking converts. Why am I even asking? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the Jewish people of South Africa that I ever said that this guy was one of you. He is an Afrikaner who converted, changed his name to make it sound more, more Jewish because he wanted to go and do fucking oppression on Palestinians, just like he did, just like he and his forefathers did to black people in South Africa before it was abolished. 74 members of his family to follow. 74 members of his family have followed. These people are such fucking pieces of shit, man. Unbelievable. I like doing it, so that's why I'm doing it. Having farmed in South Africa, it made sense to do the same in Israel. The farm is leased from the government. <coughs> Talia imports sheep from South Africa, making him not only the only Afrikaner farmer in Israel, but the only one who speaks Afrikaans to his flock. For me, it's the easiest language still is Afrikaans. So I'm talking with them Afrikaans. That white dog there, his name is Spook. Wow. But away from this pastoral paradise, there is bitter conflict. Almost every week there are confrontations between the settlers here and the Palestinians living nearby. Oh, I wonder why. It's because it's their land. From me, 621 sheep. I've Good. imported from South Africa. The ram that they have stolen only costs 40,000 shekels. That's all. Good. They should steal more. It's the legacy of the War of 1948. Legend has it that Israel's Defense Minister Moshe Dayan picked up one of his daughter's green pencils and drew a line on the map that hence divided Palestinian and Jewish land. For 19 years, the so-called Green Line marked the border until the 1967 Six-Day War, when Israel captured okay, the territories west of the line. Okay, I don't care. I only want to see the, the South line. Africans. Now, on Palestinians is unrealistic. Right in the middle of this dispute are the Afrikaners of Susia. I'm not really interested in where the Green Line used to be or where it is going, because before the Green Line, there, there was the, the Jordanian law. And the Jordanian law claims that anybody that settles the land for seven years, it belongs to him. And I am settling since 92. How long is that back? 20 since 92. Wow, he left, like, when it looked like apartheid was, was going to be abolished, he left beforehand. He was like, okay, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna be here for half a second. I already need to find a better place. Hmm, Israel, I can go there and keep doing what I've been doing. This is such a great example. This is like, if you see anyone who thinks it's not apartheid, show them this, and if they still deny it, like these are the, the people who ideologically believed in apartheid and they moved to Israel to do apartheid. You cannot point to a better example of it than these people. Like, it's already easy to prove, obviously, because it's very easy to point to how and why it is apartheid, but just this speaks for itself. These are the perpetrators of apartheid, and once apartheid was abolished, they went to the place where they thought they could best keep doing it, which was Israel. Yes, so we've got the claim now. Nasser Nawaja does have a claim. He can trace his ancestry back more than 800 years here. 
and insists that the land Jakob Talia is farming belongs to his family. Exactly. من جنوب أفريقيا بيجي مستوطن يعني يعقوب داليا بيجي وبسكن في أراضينا يعني يا يعقوب داليا من المحسن جدا إنه من جنوب أفريقيا بيجي يسوي يعني اللي Where are the new subtitles? Nasser lived here until 11 years ago. On the site of ancient Jewish Susia. There's no room? They can't come there? Sorry, there's no subtitles for some reason. It's very weird. The families move to nearby land, but the army and settlers are pressurizing them to leave. A few weeks ago, settlers bulldozed his well and chopped down his olive trees. He can say what he wants because he's an Arab, but he can't prove nothing because there is nothing. Jakob Talia says Palestinians tried to kill him twice and accuses them of grazing on his land. He also says he's the only one with papers for this land. Oh, he has papers from the Israeli government, so it's his. Waja didn't even have a paper. Excuse for the, the, the expression, to wipe his backside. So what will happen on Tuesday? More than 100 countries have already recognized the new Palestinian state, but it's not enough. Even if uh, the United Nations will come to recognize the Palestinian state, um, Gush, Sorry, Gush Katif, cutting off little pieces for peace. It's not working, it's not the solution. I think a Palestinian state, if it would really bring a solution of peace and satisfaction to people, I would say maybe yes. But on the other hand, they've made a You're a fucking here. South African who converted to Judaism in order to justify you moving to Israel and do apartheid. Shut the fuck up. You don't get an opinion on anything. That their goal is to push all the Jews into the sea. It's like saying what I'm concerned is like saying on the 20th of September, you will see I would have grown wings. I'm going to fly. Let them fly. And but how do they say? Don't fly too high, my little birds. <laughs> the only certainty is that there are tough times ahead for the fledging Palestinian state. Turmoil in which these Afrikaners from South Africa, no strangers to bitter feuds over land, will occupy uncomfortable front seats. Yeah, I mean, dumb neutral sort of framing from this documentary. But still, like, the, the raw images of those South Africans, them talking about how all of them converted. No, I mean, they converted to go to Israel. They all converted just to go to Israel. We all did it because we want to go to Israel. We all did it because we want to do more apartheid. We all did it because it's, it's the best thing to what... It's the closest thing to what we had before. That is unbelievable. They're just so open about it. Unreal. They are just a phenomenon that proves everything about the liberal Zionist narrative. About Israel's narrative in general, about apartheid and everything else so wrong because you know if it wasn't if it wasn't as bad as we all say if it wasn't like settler colonialism if it wasn't the same sort of thing as europeans have done all over the world in the past particularly as, as analogous to what has happened and what was done in south africa then why are south africans converting to judaism and like playing fucking lapping because they want to live in israel and do the same thing that they did to black people in South Africa, to Palestinians now.